What's good, super riders? Check out this move right here. I wanna show you this. This is the move we're gonna to learn today, and it's kind of the connective tissue between a lot of movements you're making when you're riding. It's essentially the way that you can make one big hop with the bike to put it from one spot to another, and it comes in really handy, a lot more than you'd even expect. This move is called the lunge, and there are a couple different names that people have for it, depending on what country you live in, what what crew you ride with, but I know it as the lunge, and so that's what we're gonna go with. Now, some people call it a surge, but in my vocabulary of trials riding, this is what a surge looks like. And if you can do a surge, there's another trick called a wedge, which looks like this. The best part about learning this move is though, although it feels advanced and feels like a big skill to have on the bike, there's actually one skill that you need to have lined up before you move on to that one, and it's a pretty easy one, it's a basic one you need to be able to hop in place because the way that you're gonna get into this move is to be hopping in place and to put your front wheel up onto something. If you can do that, if you can hop in place to keep your balance and somehow get your front wheel on something a little bit higher than your back wheel, you're in good shape to start working on this move. You don't need to pedal kick, you don't need to be able to do anything else. All you need is to be able to hop in place and then we can continue to build with this trick. Now the last thing we need to figure out before we start practicing this move is where we're gonna actually practice it. And finding the right practice spot is important on this one. You wanna find some sort of obstacle that's a little bit higher than a curb. The lower the obstacle, the less you're actually gonna be working on the movement because instead of hopping your back wheel up onto this obstacle, you're gonna be hopping forward like a wheelbase hop forward. And that's not really what this is about. It's so much more about essentially putting your back wheel where your front wheel was and it's a big vertical hop instead of a forward hop. So you wanna go a little bit higher than a curb on this. I would say try to find something that's maybe about a foot tall, between a foot and two feet, depending on what bike you have. I'm gonna demonstrate this move today on both my street trials bike and my competition bike because with a competition bike, usually it's a bit longer and you can get even steeper when it comes to getting up onto stuff. The street trial, this move is a little bit harder but still super possible and super helpful to have in your arsenal. The other element that you wanna have you wanna have a really wide obstacle to jump onto because when you first start learning it, you're gonna be a little bit out of control and you're not gonna be precise. Chances that your back wheel are gonna land perfectly where your front wheel took off, pretty slim when you first start practicing it. Obviously, you'll get better at this over time, but find a place that has a pretty generous width to it as well because you're not gonna be landing with pinpoint accuracy when you first start practicing. Now that you've found the obstacle that you're actually gonna practice on, it's time to dig right into the technique. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put our front wheel up on the obstacle and we're gonna hop our back wheel as close to the obstacle on our back foot side. And the reason why we go to the back foot, that's the closest and tightest that you can get to the obstacle. And that's where you wanna start this movement from. Now I'm gonna fast forward just a little bit here, but a big reason why we're doing exactly that is that this movement is a straight up and down movement for the most part. It's not a big leap forward. So we're really focused on a big upward movement and just a tweak to get that back wheel to move over and up onto the obstacle. And so the closer you can get into that corner, the better and easier this move is gonna be. One thing you've definitely heard me say on a previous tutorial is that you should over accentuate your movements when it comes to learning tricks on your trials bike. And the one cool thing about this particular move is that you can be in this position with your front wheel up on the obstacle and your back wheel close to the ledge for quite some time. You can just be there hopping in place forever if you want. And so one of the things you can do to practice and get ready for the next move is practice sinking into the bike. And what you're doing here, you're preloading. So, so much of the movement that you're gonna do here with the lunge is gonna be your body sinking down low and exploding upward. You can't do a pedal kick with this movement, so it has to come from your body. And you can be hopping in place and just practice sinking down and popping up before you actually go for it. So you've got this really cool way to build in a little bit of extra practice before you fully commit to this movement. Now that you've had a chance to practice the preload and get ready for this big commitment, I want you to think also about what you're going to do when you explode upward. And what you need to think about is moving straight up and pulling the bike straight up. 
If you're thinking about pushing the bike forward in this process, you're actually gonna slam into the front of the obstacle and you're gonna bounce back and land where you started. So much of your effort should be working on going straight up on this one. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the secret sauce that gives you the little bit of forward momentum that you need, but really worry about going up and the forward will come. I wanna share the secret sauce of this move with you guys. And it's really, really subtle. So because the bike is so steep here, it's hard to use your pedals to do a pedal kick motion. So the power has to come from somewhere else. The momentum has to come from somewhere else. A big part of it is how you sink into the bike and then jump out. That makes a big difference. But one thing that helps me with this process too is just lightly letting off the brakes and I roll back just a little bit before I pull the bike forward. And just that little bit of the rollback seems to help me get the momentum I need to make this whole explosive move happen. It's really, really subtle, and you can't do it a lot because otherwise you'll roll off the thing. But just like a half inch back at most, just this small kind of roll and then pop. So watch really closely how I let go of my brake, how I dig into the bike and then pop out. Those are the two main things, and that's the secret sauce that really makes the lunge happen. This move, even though you might not be thinking about it right now, actually comes in more handy, more often than you'd ever imagine. So spend some time really locking in and watching this, getting it right, practicing it. It's kind of frustrating to be able to lift your bike and put it in a new place. Like it takes a bit of time to get that, but it's totally worth it. This is one of the moves that definitely pays off. You need to have it if you're gonna progress as a trials rider. So we talked about how the secret sauce to this movement was getting that little bit of extra momentum, that little roll before we started it, but it's not exactly easy on a street trials bike. What I wanna show you next is how maximum momentum plays a role in this. This is what this move looks like at speed. If you're not stuck in one place trying to move, but you have a little bit of room to roll, once you have the original technique locked in, you can do it faster and it becomes even easier to do at higher things. But the most important thing is learn the original technique before you start speeding it up. If you don't have your timing right, if you don't have the technique right, it's just gonna be sloppy and it's not gonna work. So get the, the hard version first and then move on to the fast version where it gets easier. It's also pretty good for mountain biking. This is the basic movement that you use to hop a full wheelbase forward. If you can do this movement, you can basically throw your bike anywhere while you're riding, and that's super fun. Learning this trick is gonna help you out in a big way when it comes to big wheelbase hops and even some stylish drops. But every time you land on the lunge, you're gonna be on your back wheel. And the best thing to do from back wheel is to head on over to this back wheel playlist that I just made. Go check it out and learn another new skill.